Hi, I'm Adobe Certified Instructor Dave Kelly. Recently I've watched several videos on how to import your images into Lightroom. And while most of them have some good information, they've all been incomplete because they've left out one of the most important elements of the import process, and that is how to organize your folders panel at the same time you're importing your images. Lightroom makes it really easy to do this, and I'd like to show you just how easy it is. So let's get started. Lightroom keeps track of our images in the folders panel over here on the left side of the screen. And the folders can have subfolders, and the subfolders can have subfolders, and it gets to be very complicated. So, in my opinion, we want to create as simple a folders panel structure as possible. And to do that, I think your main folder or your master folder should be a large topic, something like birds or landscapes or portraits, depending on the type of photography that you do. In my case, I use the year for my master folder, and each photo shoot during the year is a subfolder underneath the uh, master folder, and that's the total extent of my folders panel. So, how do we get that structure set up? Well, before we start importing by putting our memory card in the card reader or connecting our camera to the uh, computer, or clicking on the import button will create a master folder and the way to do that is to click on the plus sign up here in the header bar of the folders panel when I do that we get a menu that says add folder and if I click on that I'm going to get this large dialog box on the screen and on the left side of the screen it are all of the in the hard drives connected to my computer including my computer's hard drive are listed here so the first thing to do is to tell Lightroom where you want the master folder to be. And the way we do that is we click on the ex external hard drive where we want our folder to be. Once we do that, the, the images are going to be imported to that folder. The next thing we want to do is we want to click on the new folder button down here at the bottom left of the dialog box. When I do that, I get another menu asking me to name the new folder and to create it. So I'm going to name this folder 2020 and I'm going to create it. Once I do that, my only other choice is to choose it by clicking on this choose button here at the bottom right of the import dialog box. Now when I go back over to my uh, folders panel and I look, my new folder, master folder 2020 is here but it's grayed out because there are no images in it yet. So what I want to do is create a folder, in, a subfolder inside 2020. And to do that, I'm going to bring up one of the hidden menus, one of the many hidden menus in Lightroom. Actually, I call them secret menus because no one tells you about them. And a hidden menu or a, a secret menu is a menu that requires a modifier key to open. So in this case, what I'm going to do to open the secret menu is in the, on the Mac, I'm going to control click on the 2020 folder. On the PC, I just will right click on it. When I do that, I get the secret menu, which says create a folder inside 2020. By clicking on that, I'll get another dialog box that appears on the screen and asking me to name and create the subfolder. I have some images of white tailed deer that I photographed in my yard, so I'm going to name this folder white tailed deer. And then I'll create it. Now when I go back to the folders panel and I click on this right pointing disclosure arrow which is on the left side of my 2020 folder, it shows me that my new subfolder is there, uh, uh, white tailed deer, and it is also grayed out because there are no images in it yet. And notice that I still haven't put my memory card in the card reader yet or connected my camera to my computer or clicked on the import button. What I want to do now is I want to bring up that secret menu again and, I, and this time I'm going to control click on the white tailed deer folder with the Mac or right click with the PC and I'm going to get the hidden menu again which gives me the choice of import to this folder. When I click on that it automatically opens the import dialog box and if we look at the top right of the screen it tells me that the pictures are going to go into my Lightroom external hard drive, the 2020 folder, and the white tailed deer folder. So what I have to do is select the source, and at this point, I'm going to put my 
memory card in the card reader. Once I place my memory card in the card reader, it will only take a few seconds for Lightroom to recognize that it's there. And when I click on it, it will bring up in the image window here all of the white-tailed deer photographs that I want to import into the white-tailed deer subfolder. So my next choice is to decide whether I want to copy as a DNG or just copy them. I usually just copy them. However, if I have images that are on a different hard drive in a folder and I want to bring them into the catalog, I can just move, select Move, which will move them from where they are to the external hard drive, Lightroom external hard drive. And if I, if I have images that are already on that external hard drive but not in Lightroom, I can select them all and then just add them to the catalog. As far as file handling is concerned, up here in the top of the right column of panels, um, minimal is certainly the fastest way, and it's the default. And that will bring in your images faster than anything else. However, when you bring them in that way, they come in as JPEG thumbnails. And when you decide to move them from the library module to the develop module to work on them, there will be a period of loading while it loads the raw file. So a better choice is probably embedded with Sidecar. That will take just a little bit longer for the import to be completed, but it will eliminate a lot of the loading time that occurs when you imported them as minimal. Both standard and one-to-one -one will also eliminate a lot of the loading time when you move them from the library module to the develop module. Build Smart Previews is not a bad idea if you're working on a uh, laptop. Smart Previews are smaller, lossy versions of the same images, and they stay with the catalog. And the advantage is if you want to work on them when your external hard drive is not connected, you can, you can do the developing without the hard drive connected. And when you reconnect the hard drive, Lightroom will recognize that and move any develop settings you've put on the Smart Previews onto the larger previews. Don't import suspected duplicates is a nice thing. If you've used up one card or half of a card one day and imported them that night and then filled up the card the next day and go to import, the ones that are already imported will be grayed out and only the new files will be imported. Make a second copy too is fine if you're going to do just import the images that day and not work on any of them. Go ahead and make a second copy, but it should be made to where you back up your images, which in my case is a second external hard drive. However, if you decide you're going to work on the images, then wait until you're finished working on the images because then when you back up the, the images, they'll have the develop settings on them. As far as add to collection is concerned, I don't see any reason for that. I've never been convinced that I needed to have a, s a series of images in one folder on my external hard drive and a collection of the same images also in Lightroom. As far as file renaming is concerned, if you have only one card to import and you have created a file naming template, then put a check mark in the rename file box and select your how you want to name them. If you haven't made a file naming template, which you can do in the library menu of the library module, then you can do it here by selecting Edit. And it will bring up this dialog box. And you can see that all I had to do was choose and insert what I wanted. Since my folders are all a year, I wanted a two-digit year to start my file name. Then I wanted custom text, which is either where I shot the images or what they were of. And then I want a four-digit sequence. And all I have to do is select what I want and click the Insert button next to it, Custom Text, and then my four-digit sequence here. Once I've done that, then all I have to do is click on the double-pointed disclosure arrow to the right of the blank and say Save Current Settings as a New Preset. When I do that, it asks me to name the preset. I've named mine DEK, as you can see, and then I'm done. So if I only have one card to import, I'm going to rename them. However, if I have multiple cards to import, I'm not going to rename them until I've imported all of the images into Lightroom. Uh, from all of the cards, and then I can select Capture Time in the toolbar when Lightroom will organize them so the first image is first and the last one is last. I can select them all and go into the library menu and rename them all. Apply during import is important for a couple of reasons. Well, first of all, if you know you want all your pictures to come in as a uh, as black and white or sepia or something like that, 
you can click on this disclosure arrow here and from one of the different presets that come with Lightroom you can choose it and that preset will come in on all of the images. I never do it. I always bring them in as none. I can always convert them later. As far as metadata is concerned, I think you want your contact and copyright information uh, embedded in the cards as you uh, as they're imported. And you can see I've got a, a metadata preset here. If you can create it in the metadata menu at the top of the library uh, module, or you can create a new one, or you can edit it. And all I'll do is click on that, and it will bring up this large dialog box. And the only two sections that you need to fill out are the copyright and contact information. And I'll show you mine just to save some time. You can see down here I've got my co the copyright is the copyright symbol, the year, my name, and my company name. Then it indicates as copyrighted. You can make a public domain if you want to. And then for terms of usage, I have none without written permission. And then my website. Now, to get the copyright symbol on the Mac, all you have to do is hold down the Option key and press the G key. On the PC, you want to numeric keypad type 0169. If you're on a laptop, you have to hold down the FN key and type 0169. That will give you the copyright symbol. The next thing is the, uh, the creator. You can name, uh, you can see I have my name and my address. I've left out my phone number. I have my email address, my website, and I've given myself a title of photographer, even though there's some doubt about that. <clears throat> the reason I leave out my phone number is because if some little metadata creeper in Australia finds your image at 1 o'clock in his afternoon and decides to call you up to find out why you shot it at f11 instead of f8, it's not going to be too convenient for you. It's going to be 2 o'clock in the morning. Once I've filled all of this out, then I'm going to go up to the double-pointed disclosure arrow at the right side of the blank uh, preset, and I'm going to say save current settings as a new preset, and they that preset will then be available down here in the uh, metadata preset dialog box. So the, the next thing you, do, you should do, I think, is put one keyword on your images because that will make it easier to find the images. And that keyword should be either where you shot them, Yellowstone National Park, Katmai in Alaska, or the subject of what they are. In this case, it would be white-tailed deer. Finally, you should check the destination just to make sure the camera gremlins haven't gotten in there and changed it on you. But at the very top of the destination panel, one of the important things to do is not check, or one of the important things not to do is to not check into one subfolder because you're already putting them in a subfolder. If you check this box, you will get a subfolder underneath your subfolder, and both subfolders will have the same images in them. And as far as organizing them is concerned, you have the choice of in one folder or by date. I think into one folder is far better because if your images are just going to be in one subfolder underneath your master folder, if you have gone on a 10-day safari and you photographed every day, you're going to end up with 10 subfolders underneath your subfolder, and uh, you'll have to go through all of them to find the images that you want. So at this point, I can click on the import button at the bottom of the import dialog box, and my images will all be imported into Lightroom. And if I only have one card to import, then I will click on that. However, if I have multiple cards to import, what I'm going to do is go over here to the Import Preset box, which is little known, often ignored, and by default it says None. I'm going to click on this double-pointed disclosure arrow and select Save Current Settings as a new preset. When I do that, it's going to ask me to name them, and I will just name them white tail deer and create it. So once I have have imported the first card, all I have to do is put my second card in, make sure that the import preset white tail deer is selected and hit the import button and all of the images that I've selected will come in because I've already made the choices. I won't have to go through and make all the choices again. So I'm going to just select a couple of images here and I'm going to uncheck all and I'll just select one other, other image. I'll put a check mark in the box. And when I click the Import button, the white-tailed deer images will be imported. And they'll end up in, there's one and there's the other one. Now you can see white-tailed deer has two, fo two pictures in it. And the 2020 folder has two pictures in it. So 
At the same time I imported my images, by setting it up, setting up my folders panel, I've organized my folders panel. So that is the easy way to get your images into Lightroom and at the same time you import them to organize your, your folders panel. You can find all of this information in my newest book, Lightroom Classic Made Easy, which is version 9. It's available from Amazon.com in both the hard copy and the Kindle version. So thanks very much for listening.